WCYJFM, your home for everything Waynesburg, 99.5 The Hive. It's the Coach's Corner here on 99.5 The Hive. I'm RJ Lacey joining you today. Bobby Fox, unfortunately, couldn't join us. But sitting in this week, his second year as the head coach of the Waynesburg University football team, Chris Smithley. Chris, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Now, the season so far, you guys are 2-3 and three overall. Didn't start the way you guys planned. Uh, lost the first three games to Muskingum, Westminster, and Bethany. But you weren't out of each game. You had you had multiple chances, but a nice rebound the last two against Geneva and Teal. How has the team responded since the the rough start to start you know, get the season going? Yeah, I mean, I think we're in a good place. Uh, obviously, you know, you know, we played we played some tough teams in there. Westminster is a good football team. Um, I think I think that you know there's some disappointment in in week one against Muskegon. I think that you know. The way that one played out, you know, we all felt that it was going to play out differently. Um, but I think we learned a lot in, in that game, and and it's helped us move forward, um, you know, and and look to the next week. And you know, the plan is always, you know, finding a way to go one and zero each week, and and that's what we've done. Um, and we've been fortunate to to accomplish those goals the last two weeks. Now, the offense last year seemed to be kind of what couldn't get going and now it seems like the offense is starting to settle in along with junior quarterback Tyler Perrone uh, averaging 121 yards a game fourth overall passing offense in the PAC how have you seen his improvement from the time he stepped foot on campus to now as a starter of the Yellow Jackets I, th- I think he's just building confidence um, I think that he's always been capable of, of performing uh, at the level that he's performing at um, but I think in the past couple of weeks, he's really had some confidence boosters that have really, you know, kind of lit a fire under him, you know, and it's it's really, you know, I don't want to say made him feel comfortable, um, but but as comfortable as he could be in an uncomfortable mm-hmm. situation, if that makes sense, yeah. um, you know, and, and he's he's been playing more loose, more free, and he's been making the plays that we know that he can make. Um, you know, we, we can't say enough about how Tyler has progressed. And last year, the wide receiver core was kind of pick and choose each week. Now it seems like it's this year starting to sell in. Nick Moretti really stepping mm-hmm. up, Jawan Jones, Howard Metzger, and a list of others. Has that also contributed to Perone's success so far here recently? Yeah, I don't think there's any question. You know, I, you know, if looking back to last year, you know, I try not to look back too much, but looking back to last year, you know, not only were we young and inexperienced, but we were also implementing a little bit of a new passing game. Mm-hmm. Um, so those factors played into, you know, our, you know, our production and and the level of production that we had last year. You know, this year we're a year into it. We had a spring ball into this system, you know, and, and I think that it's, you know, we're just scratching the surface of what we're capable of doing in this offense. Right. You know, it's more, more experience and, and more reps and more practice at it. You know, I think, I think that, that we can see a lot more uh, out of what we have going to. And, and guys like Nick Moretti and Howard Metzger got to be a nice surprise, you would say, because you're looking towards more Jawan, Cole Booth, Bobby Grishaber is your lead guys, but it's been Moretti and Metzger that have come up with some big catches for the Jackets this season. Yeah, Nick Nick's a guy that I mean we've always known that Nick was capable of doing this stuff. Um, Nick is an impressive individual. He's a great student. He's a great person. Um, you know, and and his abilities that he has on the field have always been there. It's been the same thing. It's been him feeling comfortable you know, within the system and and understanding everything. You know, those guys, it's important for those guys to not just understand what they need to do, but to also understand, you know, the entire concept of each play so that they can better, you know, do their jobs in each of their routes. And and Nick's really doing that. Nick is is really becoming a a game breaker, you know, with, with the way he's running his routes, the way he's practicing, the way he's catching the ball, you know, we just just yesterday, you know, in practice, I was laughing because he made two catches in practice yesterday that I've never seen him make. And I was like, you know, I just hope this thing continues to go in an upward swing for right. Nick because he works hard. You know, he, he, he deserves it, you know, but he also knows that he needs to continue working to get to where he wants to be. And then also in the offense side, it seems like the running game has really solidified itself behind junior running back. 
Chad Walker, cover boy of this week's program, and then also Jordan Taylor, a freshman coming in from Quaker Valley. You know, how has that helped you know, just balance the offense overall with this running game getting established and started? Yeah, I mean, I think that you know our, our goal obviously is to run the football and, and to control the clock and, and, and to control the possession of the football. Um, so running the football is, is key when it comes to that. Um, you know, our, our offensive line has progressed so much in, in a year. Uh, I can't even express to you the improvements that we've made. Coach Sterling does a phenomenal job with those guys. You know, they're all in. You know, they're, you know we're finally developing that offensive line culture that, that we've talked about for the, for, since I came back to Waynesburg. You know, those guys are going out. They're getting ice cream together. They're hanging out all the time in there. They've developed that real close relationship within, you know, their group. And and that's that's always important, you know, when you when you have a team that is is coming together, not just on the field, but off the field, those things are going to, you know, pay off, you know, when when the game's on the line. Now, I remember you said uh, when we did the jersey reveal, you were talking mm -hmm. to the team about a culture change and becoming mm -hmm. that family. Have you slowly started to see that more and more as the season has progressed now? Yeah, I mean, we're definitely we're definitely creating, you know, our own identity within mm -hmm. the team. Um, I think that you know there's a lot of work left to do, um, but but there's definitely steps in the right direction each week that we get the opportunity to spend together on the field, off the field. Um, you know that's 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 the big goal. You know is is to develop a standard for what we're supposed to do as a football program, not just on the field but off the field, and then living by that standard and and progressing. You know in in that standard each week. And. And you got a new coaching staff this year, you know, rebuilt. Russ Moore joins from Waynesburg Central. Mm -hmm. Brian Radakovich promoted from graduate assistant to full time. Then you bring in, you bring back Brent Blaharchek, mm -hmm. along with Dalton Wildman coming from Washington Jefferson, a local kid from West Green. How has the youth in your staff and the new faces helped? get that message out to the guys and get them to to intake it and accept it well I, I think you know regardless of the age of your staff you know I was a young coach still a young coach yeah. you know I, I don't I don't really put too much weight on on the age of, of the guys that are coaching uh, I think it's it just just like players I think it's important that that everybody's all in and everybody's bought into the program and the system and what we're trying to do here and and the guys that we have are all all on board with that you know and I think that's the biggest thing that's the most important thing when it comes to coaching staff um, you know our guys we're all young we're all learning you know you know coach Venick is is the veteran on staff but you know we had a conversation yesterday after practice you know we're learning he's learning you know we're we're trying to find ways to to win games you know different ways whatever we got to do to find a win you know that's what we're going to do so you know we're going to stay we're going to stay together we're going to stick together just like we ask our guys to do and 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 to believe in in what we're trying to do as a program and and continue to to pl plug away here and speaking of the veteran uh, Scott Beanick at defensive coordinator the defense this year really starting to they're getting healthy they're starting to turn it around I mean your third in total defense first and pass defense this year what have you seen from not just the improvement and maybe the growth of you know a Justin Wilco and a John Glenn Davis those guys have already been stable names but you know a Garrett Hebner showing up mm -hmm. in the linebacker position for you guys yeah I mean it's it's something that I expected you know I, I, I've been around coach V for uh, a really long time and I know the job that he's going to do and I know the product that he's going to put on the field and he's not going to accept anything less than that um, so that's that's stuff that's expected you know what I'm I'm ex I'm proud and 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 I'm excited about the guys that have stepped up and have progressed the way they have, you know that's you know that's you know we talk about the team and the program having a standard, you know that's a standard defensively that Coach Venick put in place in 2006, mm -hmm. you know so we're talking 12 years. So if you if you break this thing down into you know, here's our defense, you know, and this is the standard that Coach Venick put in place 12 years ago. That's what we're talking about when we're creating a culture and building a standard for the program as a whole. You know, we're just going to branch out on that. You know, I think that we've got to continue to progress, you know, and, and build depth, you know, for, for some of those guys. Um, you know, getting healthy was key for us. Um, you know that's that that's that's the major goals that we have, and we just got to go out and continue to play good defense. And I, I don't I don't expect anything less. 
And then last year, you kind of had a flip in one player. Cody Edwards kind of switched from the offensive mm-hmm. line to defensive line. Will Van Norman has really stepped up this year. And then I think it's been a nice, not a nice surprise, knew what he could do. Brendan Seifick out in the secondary making some nice plays for the whole team. It just seems like the defense, yeah, really good in pass, but had a good showing against Geneva, a triple threat option, that, that run game, and really held them in check. Yeah, and that's just that's just a test of the staff, you know, getting those guys ready and getting them ready to play and and you know, that triple options, you know, never an easy offense to prepare for. You know, a big part of that is, you know, trying to get a, a simulated look, you know, with your own guys and your look teams to to simulate that triple option. So it really comes down to you know your staff preparing those guys and watching film with those guys and making sure that they understand their assignments. I mean that that triple option. I mean those those guys are they're key in one thing and if and if their key does one thing, they got to fit in a certain place and they got to do it all the time that way. You know and they can't ever you know just start ball hawking and sniffing that ball out. I mean they got to do their jobs because if they don't, that's when those big runs happen. You know in that triple option and you know our d line has, has played good the last two weeks you know and we're excited to, to see how they come out tomorrow we're going to need a you know we're going to need a great performance by everyone tomorrow you know if we want this w yeah and looking ahead to carnegie melon a team that's really been pass heavy this year mm-hmm. um looking at the two deep tentative two deep for both team roy hubbard's not on listed as the starting running back he's not even on this in the second deep um, but this pass offense with Alex Klein and Willie Richter, it's really been the the main staple for the Tartans this year. Yeah, I mean they're they're a team that we know is going to be a, a very disciplined football team. Um, they're going to be coached well. You know, I have I have so much respect for Coach Lackner and and, and what he's been able to do in in his tenure there. Um, you know, we expect them to come down here and, and do whatever's possible to, to win a football game just the same way we're going to go out and do whatever's possible to win a football game. Um, you know, whatever's necessary, that's what we're going to get done. And, and you know, we, we're, we're ready. You know, we're, we're prepared for the, for the, the air raid that, that Carnegie Mellon has kind of developed into. Um, but number one priority for us will always be to stop the run and, and make them one-dimensional. If we can get them one-dimensional – then we'll be in a place that we want to be defensively. And you mentioned on it, you know, Coach Lackner in his 33rd year, Mm -hmm. the longest tenure coach in the conference. You yourself is the shortest tenure coach right now. Mm -hmm. You know, have you guys, you know, tried to, you know, develop a relationship? Have you taken, you know, advice, you know, anything from Coach Lackner that has really, you know, helped you in your head coaching short stint so far? I I always try to, uh, when we go to these meetings and these conferences, I always try to sit close to Coach Lackner because I know his experience and, and you know, everything that he's done. Um, I have, like I said, I have a ton of respect for him. Um, I have a lot of respect for, for his coaching staff and what they do. Um, you know, he's he's a guy that I'm always, you know, I'm, I'm going to turn into a sponge anytime I'm standing next to him because of his accomplishments, not just as a football coach, but as a human being and as a person. Um, you know, he's he's a great guy, and, and I look forward to spending some time with him here tomorrow. Uh, Carnegie Mellon coming off a loss against Grove City, 31-21, to the final there. The, the Wolverines have been a team that's kind of been a little wish-washy, and it looked like maybe they caught Carnegie Mellon at the right time. Uh, anything you guys are looking to feed off that on that one or kind of just stick to your game plan? Grove City does a lot of things that are similar to our offense, uh, more so in a run game than in the pass game. Uh, but but they did they did some things that we're not going to get into. Um, you know they they were getting into a thirty personnel look and they were really running the ball downhill at Carnegie Mellon, and and that's something that just doesn't fit our personnel. Mm-hmm. Um, offensively, I think we have one of our better game plans going into this one. You know sitting here on a Friday and that yeah. might change tomorrow <laughs> around 145 but you know we'll we'll do what we have to do we'll we'll make our adjustments the way we need to and you know we we but we need to put up some points here tomorrow and special teams for you guys last, guys last year you graduate RJ Leon the punter mm-hmm. bring in Nick Gibson who you know after you have a punter like RJ you don't really know what's going to happen it looks like Gibson is filled in nicely i mean even Tyler Perrone last week getting a couple of nice mm-hmm. punts off uh, along a 50 yards on his two punts. And then Garrett Horn, a freshman kicker, leads the PAC in field goals. 
have the special teams kind of been a little bit surprised for you, or did you kind of have that feeling going in, coming out of uh, the camp? No, I mean we we knew we knew that you know our special teams are you know what we make of them. You know it's it's we have the guys that can do it. Um, you know, but it's it's a matter of the importance that we put on special teams. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, special teams is you know right down my line of work. You know, I've done that a lot. So, you know, with Coach Sakura taking the position at Stanford, who was our special teams coordinator last year, right. I've kind of, um, you know, stepped a little bit away, you know, from some of the offense and, and have put a lot of time into these special teams. Um, I think that there's still a lot of work that we need to do on special teams. Um, our consistency isn't where it needs to be in special teams. We're a little up and down, you know, from week to week. Yeah. And, and that's something that that we need to make sure that we're putting an emphasis on. Um, I think that, you know, the games that we played, the games that we lost, and the games that we've won, you know, I think special teams have all had a huge impact on those games. You know, Muskegon more so on the negative side, right, right. with the kick return incident that we don't need to talk about. Yep. Um, then Westminster, we play great in special teams, and, and I think that special teams gave us an opportunity to win that football game. Um, you look back to Geneva and and the way our special teams played in the Geneva game. You know, we we get the big punt return that sets up, you know, us winning that football game with right. a field goal. You know, and then and then last week, you know, kind of goes, you know, drops down a little bit at Teal. You know, we have a couple critical errors on special teams that that probably, you know, lets Teal have a chance, you know, and gives them some some fire to 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 fight with, yeah. you know. And and I think that our consistency on consistency on special teams and our emphasis on the importance of every single snap that those guys take, you know, has to be has to be more consistent and ha- has to have, you know, a more of a weight to it. And having a home run re- home run threat guy and like Jawan Jones returning mm-hmm. it and even uh Howard Metzger getting back there and making some nice returns has to help and give you a little bit of confidence when those guys bust off a 20, 30 yard return and set up the offense in great field position. Yeah, and James Jackson. Yes. Um, you know, Jackson. James James is James is a good returner. You know, I think that, you know, the biggest thing with our guys and, and the biggest thing that I coach when I coach returners is just believing that that they're faster than other people. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that I I think that that's part of it. I've coached a lot of them. You know, I've coached, you know, Dion Wiegand. I've coached Barafio. You know, I've I've coached some guys that have had some some pretty legit awards right. at the returning position. Um, and and I think that getting those guys over the hump is is when they get to that corner and they believe. You know, and they believe that they're going to outrun that guy because nine times out of ten us sitting in this room right now we know that when that thing cuts back across the field there's a good chance it's going to get caught and tackled right Right. and and i think that what those guys need to do is is just you know believe in themselves you know because we believe in them we wouldn't put them back there if we didn't believe that they were the fastest guys in the conference right right they got to believe in themselves so when they got that guy lined up instead of cutting it back they got to believe that they can outrun them and when they start doing that they're going to start seeing more touchdowns in the return game as well now, homecoming this weekend, mm-hmm. you know, big festivities. Normally a decent crowd's going to be a beautiful day for some college football in western Pennsylvania. Are the guys excited? Are they starting, you're starting to get that little, the little feeling going that this is something bigger than just a, you know, a normal game during the week. It's homecoming. It's something special. Yeah, I, th- I think, I mean, we talk about it, you know, we talk about it every day, you know, about just about embracing the opportunity to to play in front of uh, a bunch of alumni that you know have been in many different situations here, winning championships, you know, grinding to do what we're doing and build a build a program the way we want to build it. Um, you know, there's guys of all teams and 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 all cultures that are going to be here to to watch our guys and to support our guys because you know they they worked their butts off when they were here and 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 they had they had pride in what they did here um i think that our guys need to embrace that but but what we also talk about and and i laugh about it because um mike zerman we he always used to laugh and joke about this is you can't get caught up in the pageantry you know because because we still have 
you know, we still have a job to do. And, and for us, it's it's another football game. You yeah. know, we're not going to make this football game more more than what it really is. It's a football game. It's it's 60 minutes that we're going to go out and we're going to battle with with a well coached, disciplined football team in in Carnegie Mellon, and and we got a job to do. And and we're going to go out and do whatever we have to do to get that done. Now. On to you personally, Yvonne, now your second year as head mm-hmm. coach, and your third year back at Waynesburg after your original stint as, a, as an assistant and a GA. How does it feel? What have you, how have you feel that you've progressed? I mean, you've talked about your team and how they progressed. Yourself, what have you felt that you have learned and grown through here in the past two years? Yeah, I mean, I, I, like, I think I told Bobby the last time we did this when you were taping, right, over, taping over there. Over yeah. There. I, you know, I'll, I'll always learn, you know, every day I'm, I'm learning, you know, how to do things better and, and, and how to make our team more successful. Um, I'll, I'll always be open to that. Um, I think that, you know, I think that I'll be honest with you, year one, I feel like went a little smoother, okay. you know, just it, it, even with the late staff, you know, this year has been a transition year and, and really, making that push for the buy-in on, on what we're doing, you know, and, and we're in a good place, but, you know, there were, there were some days where, you know, I beat myself up a little bit more than I should have, um, you know, but, but moving forward and, and, and doing the same thing that we're talking to these guys about, you know, just believing in what we're doing, believing in the process, you know, really puts, puts us, you know, in a comfortable state, you know, as a staff and, and right. as a team. Um, so, you know, I'll always learn. I'll always continue to learn, you know, anything that I can do to make us, you know, better offensively, defensively, and in special teams. I mean, I sit and watch the, you know, I watched the Patriots last night and I watch a couple of things they're doing and I'm like, well, maybe we can do something like that. And then I have to evaluate it. You know, I'm doing that stuff all the time. Right. I don't, I don't, I don't watch a football game the way most watch a football game no it's, you know? i can imagine it's hard to yeah and, and and it's also nice nowadays because you got the dvr right so i usually watch any football game like i'm watching game film you know and my wife really doesn't <laughs> enjoy that very much but as part of the game right yeah, that, that's it i mean it's a it, broadcast side we watch it from a different perspective too we watch the broadcast and absolutely it makes it difficult to watch sometimes you can't enjoy a game like you used to yeah but, and you have the veterans in Russ Moore, who's a, you know, you could say a local legend here in the Waynesburg area in the Greene County. And then Scott Venick as well, as you mentioned, you know, has set that standard for 12 years now on the defensive coordinator side. How have they helped you in your progression as head coach of Waynesburg? They're, I mean, they're huge. I mean, they're guys that I can always lean on, you know, when, when I'm, when, I, when I'm feeling, you know, like we need to make a change or we need to do something, you know, I always, th- those are my first two phone calls, mm-hmm. you know, depending on what it is, um, you know, but that's, that's honestly, that's why I wanted to keep Coach Phoenix on staff. You know, yeah. that was one of my first priorities, you know, when this thing happened. Um, and then, you know, bringing Coach Moore on, you know, I, I'll be honest with you, I've been trying to bring Coach Moore on since it happened. <laughs> Um, but but he had a obligation at, at the high school and completely understand that. But we were fortunate enough that this year it worked out for his schedule and ours. Um, but yeah, we a ton of respect for both of those guys. You know, I, I, I'd be lost without both of them. You know, I'm I'm grateful that that we have them on staff, and you know, I look forward to keep moving this thing in the right direction. Well, coach, we look forward to the game tomorrow at one thirty. You can listen to it here on WCYJ FM against Carnegie Mellon homecoming if you're there please stop by pick up a program for three bucks Chad Walker on the cover the junior running back athlete of the week this week for Waynesburg University coach thanks for taking the time out of the day and joining us here on the hive thank you guys all right this has been the coach's corner thank you to Tyler Godwin who's been the engineer today our student assistant in sports information remember the game 130 against Carnegie Mellon pregame will start here at one o'clock on 99.5 the hive your home for everything Waynesburg